Welcome to another installment of Chip Amp Theater. Well, it's time to review another IC. And this is my SGS data book from 1987. Radio and audio products. First edition. And, um... There's the date, July 1987. We're going to look at a chip amp, TDA 2822M. There is a 2822, but it's a 16 pin dual inline package, and this is a 8 pin dual inline package. So, yeah, it's a stereo amplifier on an, a little chip like that, same size as an LM386. And you notice this says preliminary data, so it wasn't out yet. They were just announcing that it will be out. And when it did come out, it was used in small boom boxes. I had a small boom box that actually used this IC in it. And I saw it used in computer speakers as well. It was quite common, pretty popular chip. And I'm pretty sure it's um, obsolete now. I'm not sure when it went obsolete, but I don't think it's a current product. Of course, SGS is now ST Microelectronics. But back in the day, they were SGS. And here's some information on the chip. A lot of people ask me, you know, I hook one of these chips up and I, I don't have a schematic. Well, if you want a schematic, just Google the part number and you'll almost definitely find a data sheet if it was at least halfway common amplifier or you know IC. You can find the part easily enough or the data sheet easily enough and get the, uh, the schematic. No problem. Okay, well going to do the usual thing, I'm going to hook it up, listening test, do a power test, and uh, just give my overall thoughts on this little IC. Okay, got it all hooked up. Let's have a lot of parts because it is stereo. I did add input capacitors. They don't have it here on the schematic, but I always think it's a bad idea because if you don't know what you're connecting to it, you know, if it has some DC offset, that can disturb the bias on the amplifier. And it's a pretty typical amplifier circuit. It has its differential pair, current mirror. Actually using a diode instead of another transistor as a current mirror. Uh, band gap reference, using for voltage sources. And class A driver, and yeah, current source. And it's a quasi-comp type output. Uh, Complementary feedback pair in the bottom. So yeah, it's a pretty classical type amplifier setup using a quasi-complementary output stage. Because uh, the power PNPs are difficult on ICs, but I guess some of the newer amplifiers like a TDA 7267 actually has a uh, fully complementary output stage. But anyway, let's take a look at the sound here, or a listen of the sound. Of course, you can't hear stereo through this mono camera microphone. I have the output set for 9 volts, 8 ohm loads. wouldn't recommend 4 ohm loads at 9 volts because the small chip can't dissipate that heat. So here we go. Sounds good to me. Very good bass. No problems there. Well, using the same old song I always use because it doesn't seem to get me a copyright strike. I have to find out what the limit is. I know people do play uh, regular music, copyrighted music, and uh, 
They don't get strikes, but they play it just long enough so that it doesn't seem to trigger the detection. So I yeah, have to look at that. Okay, well, sounds good. Let's uh, hook it up for a power test. Okay, I have the non-inductive eight ohm loads connected right to the scope, metering right at the load there. And I couldn't find my other one, so I'm just using this 8 ohm resistor on the other channel because being a stereo amplifier, we want to test both channels driven. We want maximum clean sine wave power into the load, no clipping or anything. I have the supply voltage set for 9 volts. And we're getting around uh, 2.28. And just out a bit. Ah, look when I bring my fingers near the... I get that harmonic spike. The blue line is the uh, spectrum analyzer. And it's a high impedance input and I'm getting that spike there. A pretty high frequency. Just picking up some noise. But I measured it see here about 2.28 volts divide that by or I'm sorry square that result divide that by your impedance of 8 ohms you get about 650 milliwatts and well that's not really great I was, like to get closer to 1 watt um, it's probably your uh, theoretical maximum if you take into consideration the losses in the amplifier probably some losses in the wires and circuits but uh, a little better than the LM386 but really not up to the TDA 7267 or its stereo cousin the 7268 can't remember if I got about the same with that one in this test I'll have to go watch that video again and see but not bad little chip for what it is, I mean, it's a tiny power amp in a little package here. And got a little warm. Continuous sine wave power into two channels. I would recommend it if you can find it. Again, uh, it, it's obsolete, so it'd have to be uh, new old stock. And, you know, buying them... From China off of eBay. I don't know if you're going to get an authentic one. But that's it. Thanks for watching.